This is the Speak for Yourself podcast featuring the best of Colin Cowherd and Jason Whitlock. I'm your host, Jason McIntyre. Hump day, we get game three of the finals. Everybody and their mom is picking the Cavs. Hey, man, you know I call the sweep. I will be dancing in the streets tonight if the Warriors win game three. Here we go. Whitlock explains why the Warriors going 73-9 and last year was much more impressive than potentially going 16-0 in the postseason this year. Cowherd sums up these NBA finals so far as a failure on the part of J.R. Smith and Tristan Thompson. Co-host of the Herd, Christine Leahy, takes a jab at LeBron for waving the white flag now, but in the offseason, he said he was chasing a ghost. Former NBA champ Eddie House says, don't be fooled by Ty Lue and LeBron talking about pace and keeping everything the same. Eddie thinks they're going to change it up and throw different looks at the Warriors. We talk about the big news from Oklahoma today, shockwaves in college football. Bob Stoops out as the Oklahoma head coach. We got to talk Odell Beckham Jr. as well. The rest of the guys on the show think it's fine for Odell Beckham to miss OTAs. I, I Listen, I've got plenty of reasons why I don't think it's cool. Ready for Speak for Yourself? Cowherd and Whitlock, take it away. All right, hello and welcome. Joining us today is NBA champion Eddie House and Collins co-host and my favorite host, Christine Leahy. All right, we'll dive into Bob Stoops' shocking retirement in a minute, but let's start in Cleveland where the Cavaliers really hope a return home is all they need to turn this series around. Ty Lue won't change the starting lineup and said the team, quote, won't change their game because of the two blowout losses in Oakland. LeBron doesn't sound too concerned either. Are we tired? I don't know, people's no, that people. to me when, you know, no. that's the question I've been answering. No, nah, I feel radio great. <laughs> I'm averaging a triple-double in the finals. I don't, I'm, I'm pretty good, I, I would think. All right, King James is 4-1 and one in his career, went down 0-2, with his only loss coming to the Spurs in the 2007 NBA Finals. Kyle Hurd, do you expect LeBron and the Cavs to win tonight? Yep, and then I expect the Warriors to win out in five. I was wrong about this series. Two things that have really jumped out to me. First of all, Tyron Lou, after the first two losses in the postgame press conferences, was not defiant or angry. He looked like Brad Stevens after the Celtic losses to the Cavs. We're outmanned here. The second thing is LeBron yesterday saying, hey, it's just basketball. He is already projecting I'm going down in this series. That I think LeBron knows it, Tyron Lue knows it. They've been around basketball for a long time. Sometimes you are outmanned, and I think Golden State has outmanned them. Outmanned? It sounds like you talking about a white flag. Uh, you talking about quitting. I'm not saying quitting, but I think you, you know. White flag. You know when you're outmanned. You know when they have more Longer, quicker, faster. LeBron James has given up. He's conceding. Uh, again, you're saying conceding. I'm saying they know the truth. They'll fight like hell. They know the truth. When I... LeBron gives up, though, he gives up. And he's done. And when he's already starting to say, oh, it's just basketball, like, now you're going to say that? Because you were also the guy saying you were chasing the ghost of Michael Jordan. So which is it? It's a convenient time. And Ty Lue saying that he's not going to make any adjustments because you shouldn't change the way you play based on your opponent. Like, are you kidding me? What else? Well, you're going to have the same result as game one and game two if you're not going to make any adjustments, unless you're posturing. I think it's all just gas. They got to change something. And he's not going to expose his hand and say, hey, yeah, guess what? We're going to do something different. We're going to send LeBron to the post. We're going to play out of the uh, post with LeBron and make them double team that way and start swinging the basketball. No, they're not going to say that. He's going to say, oh, we're going to do exactly what we've been doing, which is giving up 46% from the field, 39, almost 40% from the three. That has to go down, number one, if the Cavs expect to win a night. Their, free, uh, their field goal percentage has to go up and three-point percentage has to go up. LeBron has done everything he can, average a triple-double. What more can he do? We need the you role players. Well, look, no, look, not, you can't do more than average a triple-double, man. You need your role players. You can't have four guys in more. two games <laughs> combined for 18 points. You just can't have that happen. You need Eddie, somebody else to I'm show up. I'm not knocking him. He's great. He's averaging a triple-double. He can do more. He's well, averaging four points in the fourth quarter. He can do more. We've seen LeBron go for 40, 45 points when pushed. That, I, I'm either expecting the 40... The result. I agree, but I'm expecting the 40-point LeBron tonight in a loss. 
or we're going to see LeBron mail it in and look like he did against the Dallas LeBron Mavericks in 2011. LeBron has 40 tonight and his role players step up because every championship team, they have role players that step up, be it on the team that I played, James Posey, Leon Poe. They've done nothing you in the know, series. Nothing like at When all. you watch the game, they have done, Cleveland's, they, I could do more. Cleveland's backups done exactly what I've look done. outclassed. Like, they stand out on the TV screen. You're like, wow, they're old and slow. Like, you can't put it all on LeBron. Well, what about Ky Kyrie, Kevin Love? When we're getting to the point where, like, we miss Matthew Dellavedova, that is an issue. And what happened here is, remember at the beginning of the season, the Cavs were trolling the Warriors with their cookies and their stuffed dead body. They poked the bear. And that's when Draymond Green was like, I want to annihilate these guys. And that's what they're doing. I don't think, to be honest with you, that they wanted to do that regardless. They want their get back from last year because they feel like they had them and they let them off the hook. But... I need my role players to step up. Where are you at? Give these guys some help. Every team has role Andre players that Iguodala. win championship. Was the MVP, and he was a role player. I get, and he we, got the we MVP. Just gonna, LeBron has no accountability, no responsibility. Averaging, it's his team. Averaging there's a, a triple There's a double. difference between no accountability and all accountability. Exactly. He's doing his part. Who picked these players, Kyle? No, again, that's fine. But it's again, Tristan Thompson would be on the team. They overpaid for him. But he wasn't going to get who max was money. Who was Tristan Thompson's agent? Yeah. Who was Tristan Thompson's agent? It doesn't matter. Rich Paul. The money that he, he has, gets prevents but the he rest has of the to team perform. It's on him. It's like you go pick you a car, right? You want that car to perform the way you picked it, right? The, the way you want it to perform. If it doesn't, you want to give it back, right? But you're stuck with it. You got to make your payments on it or sell it. So you, they stuck with it this year. And at the end of the day. LeBron is doing everything he can. Kyrie is playing well. Kevin he Love is the team. on the glass. Okay, but or regardless, maybe LeBron it's is these... not a GM and he should let the GM. Okay, but do regardless, his job. regardless of what you're doing, his job. Regardless Griffin's of doing what a great you're job playing, over there. forget salary. When they play tonight, nobody cares about salary. Tristan and Jay have been awful. Regardless of what they make, they've been awful. This is a mismatch of talent. There was a man who's Rich Paul, LeBron's guy, represented Tristan Thompson. LeBron James wanted Tristan Thompson paid. LeBron James last season, I, th I thought I saw him over social media, campaigning for J.R. Smith to get paid and to come back on the team. So how can we just, uh, well, LeBron did all he could. J.R. was great in last, last, last year's year. final. And you should have known you were playing with house money with J.R. Nobody should be double down on J.R. No Smith. two starters should have zero points in the final. The Warriors are two wins away from becoming the only team to go 16-0 in the playoffs ever. The Warriors say they aren't focused on the perfect postseason, even though this is the same team that took every chance to tell the world they were chasing <laughs> 73 regular season wins last year. We want 15-0. That's what we want. We literally have never once mentioned 16-0. Um, it's a, it, to me, it's a miracle that it's even a possibility. It's so hard to do. We made that mistake of circling 73 and worrying about the wrong thing before. If we were able to do that, I don't think when I talk about championship, I say, we only team wins 16 and 0. I say, we won a championship. Honestly, I wouldn't regret those decisions at all. We were uh, well known. We were one game away from winning a championship. So who you can, you can, I don't think you can second guess that that much, but 16 0 doesn't matter in any stretch of the imagination unless that's a closeout game and that's the opportunity in front of us because all it is is just winning a championship and um, doing what you need to do to get that done. So tomorrow is another step in that direction that um, we need to be ready for. All right, Whitlock, 73 regular season wins or a perfect postseason? What's more impressive? For me, the 73 uh, regular season wins. Listen, the Trailblazers, Utah, didn't put up much resistance uh, in the first two rounds of the playoffs. San Antonio started to put up resistance, and then Zaza uh, broke Kawhi Leonard's ankle. And, and so that got him to 12-0. <laughs> now they're playing the Cleveland Cavaliers, and if they sweep the Cavaliers, that would be very impressive. But 73 wins over the course of a regular season is really impressive. I was glad they went for it. It didn't cost them the championship. Draymond Green cost them the championship. So, to me, the 73 wins in a regular season, more difficult. Well, I mean, I've, I've, my takeaway in the NBA has been, like in the NFL and hockey, because of the violence, you pretty much know every night guys are giving it everything they have or you can get hurt. We do know in baseball, because of the size of the games, the number of the games, you're never going to get ultimate urgency in the summer. Everybody gives you a reasonably similar effort. Basketball is the only sport in this country where, depending on the night, you don't get an equal effort in the regular season. 
There's no physical danger to worry about. And there's not 162 games. Stars sit out. You have a back-to-back. -back. I'm rested. You're not. The regular season to me, because so many teams are allowed in the playoffs, I've never understood why anybody takes anything from it. I've, I've, I've always said this. How do I know that's the best Bulls team? Because of the record? Could they have been better the following year, but somebody got an ankle twisted and they missed games? Like, like the record means that's the best? Houston Rockets. So you're won. on 16-0. Oh, to, to go undefeated against playoff caliber teams. Nobody goes into a playoff game and a star never sits. Everybody's equally rested. Regular season stuff, these guys sit out games. Huh? I, I, it's a grind. The regular season's a grind, yeah. and I respect them taking that journey. Especially, it's a marathon. Especially in a year where we've talked more and more about how the regular season isn't being taken seriously and guys are taking games off and resting, I applaud the Warriors for taking it seriously and getting as many wins as they did, especially when they were one of the two teams to play the furthest into the summer, so they didn't have as much time to recover. So they actually had tougher competition during the year than they have really in the playoffs. As you said, that the Spurs were really the only competition that they had seen until they got to the the Cavs and Kawhi and Tony Parker weren't even there. I'm going 16 and 0 because that means you finished the job that you started at the beginning of your season. Going 73 and 9 and not finishing it, and finishing it off really doesn't mean anything. You finished in second place. You get, you have the best regular season record, but you didn't have the best postseason record. And going 16 and 0, that'll be the first time anybody has ever did that. And as far as single you do season, know, 73 as, was the first time anybody ever did that. Too. Yeah, but I mean, but they won the championship though. And then you know, the, <laughs> at the end of the day, when you look at regular season wins, the Warriors have 73, the Patriots won 16. Cubs and Mariners went 116, and the Red Wings went 62, and none of them won a championship. So, regular season, I want to win a championship. I could go, I, I have a under a 500, say if I sneak in and, as an A seed and gotcha. win a championship, I'm, that's all I'm playing for. I'm not playing for no regular season accolades. I'm playing for championships, and that's it. Think about how hard it is to sweep a team in the NBA. Now, we consider Michael Jordan's Bulls the best team ever. If I said to everybody... No, you do, but go ahead. Well, I mean, a lot of people do. <laughs> a lot of so people do. So Jordan's yeah. team... Okay, and I said, okay, list your top ten teams ever. And I, yeah. I gave you all a day to go back and look at records. None of you would have the Utah Jazz in the top ten. None of you. Nope. Most of you wouldn't have them in the top 20. But the Jazz beat them twice in both finals. Because to beat the same group of guys six, five, six times, there's psychological... If I move... If I fly into Denver and I got better players, I beat you. If I have to play you set six, seven times in a two-week stretch, and I just blew you out the night before, emotionally, I don't bring the same thing. It's hard to sweep. I, you're making people. a fair point. You're making a fair point. But again, to me, it's the difference between... And again, Usain Bolt won the 100-meter dash, and that's what we're all into at the playoffs. But he's no more impressive than the marathon guy that won the 26-mile race. He's no more impressive. And for me, as someone who has run 100 meters, it's easier to run 100 meters than it is to run 26 miles. And to have the discipline, the will, uh, the courage to even take on that challenge and to accomplish it when you could take a night off because you know it doesn't matter, and they didn't. Very impressive. And, more, and be, given how little resistance they got in the Western Conference playoffs... Again, if they had faced some stronger competition or even San Antonio at full strength, I would be right there with you. I'm adding that variable to say, hmm, not as impressive. If you don't win it, it doesn't mean anything, man. And 16 and 0 is super impressive. Sweeping, sweeping four teams, that's crazy. That's never been done. And to win a championship and against gotcha. LeBron James, it'll be gotcha. fantastic. Welcome back. Now joined by Super Bowl champ Eric Davis, founder of TheBigLead.com, Jason McIntyre. Let's talk some college football. I love that topic. Shocking news out of Norman, Oklahoma. College football head coach Bob Stoops retiring effective immediately from the Sooners. Stoops was the head coach for 18 years, won a national title in 2000, reportedly told the team today of his intent to retire. He'll remain at the school in some capacity. Here's a portion of the statement Stoops released just moments ago. I understand... There's been some speculation about my health. My health was not the deciding factor in this decision. I've had uh, no incidents that would prevent me from coaching. I feel the timing is perfect to hand over the reins. Whitlock, shocked? I I'm surprised, but I think we could start seeing this happen more and more. These coaches have made a lot of money. 
and the politics around being a head coach, particularly in college sports, has changed tremendously. Bob Stoops has had the Joe Mixon incident. Uh, D.D. Westbrook was involved in some things. Baker Mayfield, his quarterback, involved in some things. I, I think this is a very smart move for a lot of veteran proven coaches. Get out while your reputation's intact, while your health is good, while you can still enjoy life. There's more things to do than just coach college football. Well, and also, Bob's got a fairly youthful appearance, and you forget that he coached at Oklahoma almost as long as Bo Schembechler did at Michigan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he got the job early. He looks young. He's got a, you know, a personality. He doesn't look like an old football coach. He looks like a guy that, you know, got a job a few years ago. Bob's been around a long time. He has been around a long, and long time, and he's got a title. Me with a 33-year-old kid, Lincoln <laughs> Riley. This is, this is an amazing story. Bruce Feldman of Fox reported that, uh, you know, uh, Bob Stoops' father passed away at 54 while coaching in high school football. He was a legendary coach in Ohio. And you wonder, Stoops now 56, okay? The health issues, Urban Meyer uh, left Florida. And uh, also, Bob bought a place in Chicago earlier this month uh, on the Gold Coast. So it's almost like this has been in the works for a little while. But I wonder, though, who goes through the drudgery of spring practice and recruiting to then leave in June? The timing to me, <laughs> just something seems a little odd. I, I, um, the timing seems odd, but, I, but when you really think about it, if the health is okay and if there is nothing, you know, in the closet that's going to come out and, and, the, and the program is clean and there's nothing he's running away from, I actually like the timing of it. I can see it happening uh, because now, you know, you've already got your recruiting class in. You've gone through your spring. You leave your coaches in the best possible situation. Yeah. You, you're helping, you've helped with all the evaluations of what players should be where, um, which is what you really figure out in the springtime, and then you move on from there. Um, I, I, my main thing, I can see these coaches leaving now, as you guys both touched on. You touched on health, you touched on money, uh, but it's a different world now, the players that you're dealing with. It, it's become a profession. You know, you got, I didn't grow up saying I wanted to be a pro ball player, and that was the thing. Now you start specializing when you're yay big to be a pro ball player. So controlling these young men in college that are still young men trying to figure out who, who they are has become much more difficult, and the spotlight's on you, so get out before you get in trouble and if also, you can. There's a lot of TV football analyst jobs out there. There's 31 sports networks. You can just very soft landings now for coaches. Stoops would be offered a job by virtually. Oh, he'll be, he may coach for again. Two, but three Colin, million also, a year. Yeah. I mean, it'll be a good living. Aspect. They're returning a Heisman contender at quarterback in Baker Mayfield. They've had back-to-back -to -back top five finishes. He's not leaving the cover bare, okay? No. This is, this is going to be a very good team this year. I, I'm Listen, just still well, shocked. First of all, I think we, we, we talked about the timing. First of all, any time Stoops leaves, when's the last time Oklahoma wasn't a top ten preseason team? He was going to leave a good team. Whenever he left. Uh, yeah. Secondly, I don't know if this is a terrible time. They just had the recruiting class. Yeah. They have been, this Lincoln Riley kid, they've been on this for like three years. I could make an argument, like Eric said, if I was going to leave a program, this month stretch is when I would leave. And remember, he's not walking away. He's just going to another office. He's still he's walking, he's, down, the hallway. He's walking down the hallway. I, I, <laughs> I think he might just be a little bit ahead of schedule. According to the reports we're seeing, Joe Castiglione and... Bob have been working with Lincoln Riley for like, in terms of grooming him yeah. for this what spot. Is it, 33 years 33 old? years old. And so I could see Bob saying, I'm next year was probably when he planned on getting out. And then you just have one of those moments and you just go, is this really what I want to do <laughs> at 56? I got a wife, I'm in good health, I got plenty of money. You know what? It's time to go right now. We've been grooming Lincoln Riley. I don't need one more season. I don't need one more headache. I don't need one more controversy. And by the way, I want to leave the door open. I still, and I said it last year, he'd be the number one candidate for any college job. You know, Bob may go up to Chicago with his wife, and he may go there for a couple years. Nightlife's fun. Bob will be 58. He gets in better health. You know, he starts, he starts eating better. Start sleeping better. Don't close the door. The Big 12 has some real issues. Maybe Bob's also saying it's the time to move out of the Big 12 <laughs> well, and resurface in the SEC or the Pac-12. I would resurface on television at 3 or $4 million a year and let someone else have the headache. That's true. All right, welcome back.
Eric, Johnny Cochran Davis is back <laughs> with us. As is Jason McIntyre. Let's talk some Colin Kaepernick. Wow. Court is in session. Who is still without a job after the Seahawks chose to sign journeyman Austin Davis as their backup instead of the controversial Kaepernick? That decision has raised several eyebrows, including that of New York Daily News troller Sean King, who went as far as to say he'll boycott the NFL because of Kaepernick's blacklisting. Uh, the troller wrote, I can't in good conscience support this league with many of its pro-Trump owners as it blacklists my friend, my brother, Colin Kaepernick, for taking a silent, peaceful stance against the injustice and police brutality in America. It's disgusting. And it has absolutely nothing to do with football and everything to do with penalizing a brilliant young black man for the principled stance he took last season. That's what Sean King said. Colin, should the NFL be concerned with blacklisting Kaepernick and upsetting fans? No, I think leagues rarely dip when a player leaves. Uh, Michael Jordan, maybe Tiger, but it's generally a superstar. Um, you know, I mean, Peyton Manning left, maybe 1% dip in the AFC. But by and large, leagues withstand players leaving unless they're really... I mean, Tiger's the best golfer I'd seen in my life. MJ was unbelievable. Oh, Cap's not Tiger? Well, backups generally come and go in this league. Oh, that's right, he's out. By the way, so. Tim Tebow, Tim Tebow was really a backup in the end. I mean, and Tebow was wildly popular. Denver TV ratings didn't go down when he left because they got Peyton Manning. It's a talent-driven world we live in, and he's just not that talented. Tebow was actually popular with football fans, too. And, oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. With football yeah. fans. Kaepernick, not quite as popular with football fans because Sean King, despite all his protest and right, he's not a football fan. He is someone that stirs racial animus. And Colin Kaepernick should read this piece in the New York Daily News and say, hey, man, you're not doing me any favors. This is why I'm struggling to get a backup job or any job in the NFL. Because if I was an owner, this is right here is what I would be afraid of. Kaepernick's friends in the media, the NFL, the headline of this story was the NFL is now anti-black. They're anti-blackness. The NFL has created more black millionaires and taken more black men out of poverty to college campuses and college education like me than any other sport I can think of, but somehow now the NFL is anti-black and we should boycott it because Colin Kaepernick doesn't have a job. Get the hell out of here. Yeah, according to the Huffington Post, last yeah. year, 70% of the NFL is African-American. Yeah. I counted six black quarterbacks next year in the league, maybe eight starters if Teddy Bridgewater comes back and Deshaun Kaiser wins the job, but I, I don't get the bigotry angle. I mean, frankly, I don't think the NFL gives two... You know, Rip. bad words yep. about uh, Sean King protesting the league. Oh, I, I just don't think it matters at all. The no. NFL doesn't really care about anyone protesting the league. So, you know, this may shock uh, you, Whitlock, but the Go NFL, ahead, but, but no, the NFL is not concerned with anyone. Num number one, from a fan standpoint, for the majority, for the most part, people don't root for players. They root for laundry. You love your colors. Right. You love you, you love Brett Favre when he plays for the Packers, but then he goes and plays for Minnesota. You're a Packers fan. You don't right. love Brett Favre so much. Cowboy fans uh, hated T.O. An hour later, they loved him. And that's that's how it is. <laughs> exactly. When he when he stood on the star, he wasn't their guy. But when he was their guy, he's their guy. You root for the laundry. So the league is not concerned about that. You touched on it. The league it, it, it's bigger than any one player. <laughs> you'll keep going. You'll move on. The, the stuff when you get as big. I, I was told this once by a boss at my former employer. He said, when you get as big as we are, that was my former employer. Who's he, your former employer? ESPN. Oh, okay. Just he said, when you get as big as <laughs> you worry about lawsuits, that, that's what you worry about. You worry about the government stepping in and saying, okay, we're breaking this up. You know, like, like, that's what concerns massive, that's what concerns Apple, Facebook, not a disgruntled employee, not a columnist. The government stepping in and saying, we got to break up Apple. Apple has a monopoly on the tech business. So, like, I, I know the media thinks they matter. I always said this about Bill Clinton. Fox News was never more powerful. Rush Limbaugh was never more powerful during Clinton's heyday. People basically read for affirmation, not information. The people who like Cap read people who like him. The people who don't read people who don't. 
and this columnist has no impact. And I got I got bad news for Sean King. Like he may have to start looking at who uh, is the owner of the pizza joint that he goes to, and the airline that he flies on, and the car that he buys. There's a lot of pro Trump guys out there. You can't say I'm boycotting the NFL because the owners like. Donald Trump. Well, what about the NBA owners? What about Major League Baseball owners? There's plenty. Well, Sean, the thing, this is so misplaced and the, just, I'm just upset reading Well, forward. just know that just the thing that you have to realize is that ownership of these teams didn't change when Trump came in the office. These guys are the same people. <laughs> exactly, yeah. they, they are the same people. And I heard I heard what you were saying about the NFL creating, um, you know, so, you know, the percentage of millionaires yeah. and all these things. That's true. There are a lot of guys that have, in my entire adult life, in some capacity, I've been employed in some way or the other by the NFL. I get that. Um, but there's still a lot of things that need to be done better within the NFL and there's still a lot of there are still a lot of situations where Simon Kaepernick on that there, list. Well, well, well that need to be well, done. I, I this I, I for some reason it seems like I'm like you have to sign Kaepernick. I'm not saying that. Okay, I I I've, I've started from I've started from the jump saying just say this is the reason why. That's all. It, it, that's 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 don't try to get behind don't try to stand behind the fact that it's just his play. Thir the 32 guys that can that can say you get a job or not. He upset those guys, the, major the majority of those guys. So that's what happened. His, his, his possible employers don't like what he did. Can't those and that's 30, okay. Can't those 32 guys have 32 different reasons yeah, or yes. 16 different reasons? Yes. Some might be the protest. Some might be he doesn't fit our system. Some might be, man, I don't want well, the well, baggage of the it, controversy. But hold, but hold on, this number one, all 32 of those guys, yeah, there are very few players in the league that can play for all 32 teams. Right. They're, they're very few. Yeah. So, so it's not all 32. So the segment of the teams that he had an opportunity to play for, I believe he upset some of those people yeah. with his stance. It's yeah. that simple. And, and But listen, they can do that. It's their team. You know how I don't good have an issue you have it. to be to piss off your boss and still get a job? Yeah. <laughs> you got to be better than yeah. Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, you can't, do any, you can't put anything on film to justify it. You're right, because now you can use that as By the way, experience. there's one guy in the NBA that did that, LeBron with Dan Gilbert. Right. Because he was LeBron. Like, it's really, really yeah. hard. LeBron. Hey, by the way, Pat Riley, he would take it back today, too. Eric Davis, Jason McIntyre back with us once again. Let's talk Odell Beckham Jr. He's fun to talk about. Made headlines last month by working out with our own Chris Carter instead of attending Giants OTAs. Now Adam Schefter is reporting that Odell skipped the voluntary team workouts in part to show his desire to get a new contract. Still on the rookie deal, Odell is scheduled to make 1.8 mil this year and has no financial bonuses tied to attending off-season workouts. Jason, now that we know money is involved, have a problem with Odell skipping OTAs? Do I have a problem? Yeah, because if he wanted a max contract and wanted to work on his contract, the time to do that was the playoffs, when he had a chance to have a big game instead of dropping balls and looking like a bum after going on that boat party. Uh, listen, Odell's going to be a headache for the Giants. Nike's now paying him, and he's got a, he's got a different... Uh, ownership group that he's answering to, Phil Knight and Nike. And if I were the Giants, I would play tough with him because he's not nearly as valuable to Nike if he ain't catching a lot of balls and in the star of the team. They got Brandon Marshall. This guy's going to be a headache. I don't see this ending well. Well, he's not a quarterback, so my rule's always been I give a lot of latitude in voluntary off-season workouts to non-quarterbacks. I can deal with Des Bryant being a headache. I don't want that to be. Listen, he's a superstar. It's voluntary. He's making a statement. I got NBA players making statements all the time. NFL guys don't get many opportunities. It doesn't bother me a ton. Right, let me push back on you on this, Colin. So Mike Tomlin and the Steelers just went to the AFC title game. He's got a Super Bowl. Very good team. You know what he did on the on a day of the OTAs? Canceled practice. Took everybody to Dave and Buster's. Called it togetherness, brotherhood, building unity on the team. You think that, Odell Beckham could have used that, some of that, that as the face of the Giants, as a leader? That won't win a single game. It will oh. not, but it builds unity. That, but Come David on. Buster. It might build uh, some you, unity. You, you know ahead. what, Colin? I'm, I'm going to jump in on this one right here, and, and this is the one thing. Now, you can't really up your, your position or status with a team in the OTAs. You, you can't. All, all you can do is look, ask Jeremy Macklin. All you can do is get cut. Or hurt. You, you, can't, you can't make a team during that time of the year. So that, that's one thing. Um, so, but you need to get in work. What you can do, you, you can show your leadership. You can show, and, o, and this is where Odell is. Uh, and and I, I love the kid. 
where he is right now, he is he is a vet. He is one of the leaders. He he is he has an opportunity to now start showing guys how he's working. You don't have to be there. It's voluntary. You don't have to be at those OTAs all the time, but show your face in the building from time to time. You don't need to be there every day. If he's out working, getting you can get a lot more done. I didn't go all the time. You can get a lot more done outside of what they have you doing. You can get more specific in your training. He's had four so months that, of that. That's he's okay. Been partying all well, off season. Hold, dude. hold show on. Up. No, no. He doesn't need to be there every day. There's no but other than to come in, as you said, just to be around his boys because he is a leader, whether he wants to be or not. He has morphed into that role. He's one of those guys now. He's, you so think he's he established himself so, as a leader? So he need, yes, yes, by his play. By his play, guys. Yeah, that, that's what you follow. It's not standing up giving somebody a speech. That, that He puts it down on the field, so you can say they can play hardball with him, not if they want to win. When you have a they, got, they got to use him. When you have a really helped him in the playoffs. When you have collective <laughs> bargaining, uh, you come out of a collective bargaining and the owner feel they want a couple areas and the players feel, the owners never budge on the stuff they went on until the next CBA. Well, the players fought for voluntary workouts. They fought for that. They got them. This is why they got it's, him. It's voluntary. Why should the players now give back to the owners? Well, listen, that's an argument. But again, Odell's in a situation where he wants more money and a new contract. But no, that's an assumption. This is the thing. He, what of course, no, 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 that he's that he's not there. He's not there. And I'm gonna get on the phone as soon as, as soon as we finish this. I'm gonna call him. You're assuming he's not there because of the money. Odell understands. He, he he's smart enough to know they have him on a rookie contract. They got Shepard on that contract. You you got the machine and you got him on a, a very good contract. They have an opportunity to, to win right now. They put two hundred million dollars into the defense last year. He's got two years left. They're not gonna do sign him right now. They're gonna hope that that mo that money that they that Antonio well, he's just Brown. He's just the OTAs just because he don't want to be he, there. No, he's working. Yes, he doesn't well, he have had, he to had be there. To he's game still two of the finals. Working. Also, he, had he, to be. he he doesn't. It's not. He said he's going to be there. A holdout is you have to be there for your mini camps. Okay, now when I'm supposed to be here and you can find me, I'm giving up money. Now I'm making a statement. This is a free day. This is the Speak for Yourself podcast featuring the best of Colin Cowherd and Jason Whitlock. I'm your host, Jason McIntyre. As always, subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Tell all your friends. We're on SoundCloud, YouTube. Folks, I am so geeked for tomorrow. By the way, special public service announcement. We've got a two-hour show tomorrow. Hooray! And reminder, we're on all FS1 social media accounts because that's where the hot take happy hour can be found today. Have a good night.